Hi, it's Lee Schneider, founder of Digital Fundraising School with a crowdfunding success story. I just finished a Skype interview with Ellen Sperling, co-founder of You've Got Funds. Here's the interview, live, no edits. Here we go. Welcome. Thank you, Lee. Glad we finally made it. Yeah, here we go. So uh, how are people predominantly using You've Got Funds? Well, um, it's real interesting. It, we've had quite a different variety of uh, clientele, and it goes anywhere from businesses, people that are looking to add new technology, or they're starting a new business. It could even be that they have an existing business, and they're looking to expand in a different area, or starting with a new project. Uh, we have a lot of creative projects, film dance, uh, people looking to publish their own books. Uh, we do work with quite a few nonprofit foundations and, uh, and also there are the various personal causes. Now, why did you start the platform in the first place? Well, our background at You've Got Funds uh, personally has been in business. We're entrepreneurs. We've uh, worked a number of different companies starting from start. Uh, really ground up and as we looked into other businesses we realized that the biggest issue for everyone is capital and uh, whether you're looking personal or you're looking to really develop something you can't go forward if you don't have proper capital or you really can't go forward properly unless you are well funded so that was something that we found so interesting about crowdfunding that it gives people the opportunity to really go to the crowd. They don't have to go to the bank. Uh, they don't have to worry if they're going to get a bank loan. They uh, really try to present what they have to the public and see the public's reaction. And uh, a lot of times it's very profitable. Now there's a lot of competition out there. There's Kickstarter, there's Indiegogo, there's Rocket Hub, there's, I mean they're just mushrooming. There must be, I think, more than 600 platforms worldwide wow. at this point, according to the last count, <laughs> some of which, of course, I've never heard of, and some of which are becoming very, very famous. Well, how do you guys differ? How do you set yourselves apart from, say, the, the big guys like Kickstarter and Indiegogo? Well, um, it, you're right. It's such a fast-growing industry, and there's so many people that have come into it and have really specific niches. Uh, what we've tried to do is at You've Got Funds, we give really personal attention. So the first thing that I think is really the most important is that we believe if you're raising your money, if you're putting in effort, you should absolutely leave with what you've raised, basically. Uh, there are fees involved, but... Unlike Kickstarter, for example, if you don't reach 100% of your goal, you're out of luck. You walk away with zero. And you've got funds, you're walking away with basically the majority of what you raise. So, And that is so essential because whether your goal is $500 or $5 million, there's a lot of time and energy that people put into crowdfunding and you know it, how awful it is to come away with nothing. So that's the first thing. The second is that some of the others, you have to decide up front. Are you doing uh, a campaign that, again, you're risking everything to the end? Did you meet your goal? Or if you pick, I I'm going to get the money no matter what, you know, they, they charge you double. So uh, there's some crazy things there that go on in the industry. Uh, with that personal tension at You've Got Funds, we really try to uh, we evaluate every Every project that comes in, we make suggestions. People are getting an email or a phone call from us. Uh, we really want them to do the best that they can do. So. Yeah, that's a very interesting point that you will actually get in touch with the people who are listing and give them advice. Give them Because let's face it, a lot of people do need advice about crowdfunding. Oh. A lot of people just kind <laughs> of jump in. You know, it's very exciting and it sounds great, but there's a lot of preparation that goes into this, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute. I think that's important. Who's your most common person using it? Is it a business, a personal project, a creative project? I would say most recently, we've actually had quite a few people with personal causes. Um, again, not entirely. Um, there are a lot of different new businesses, people that we, we have someone now who does natural uh, eco-friendly cosmetics. We have someone else who's doing a... Um, 
they're on a big tour. They do presentations to help people reduce stress. Uh, it, we have again have some couple of big nonprofits that are going to be coming out soon with their campaign. Uh, it certainly makes it interesting because we never really know what each day brings. So that part is nice. Yeah, well, that's one of the things that has always fascinated me about crowdfunding. There's just it's not all tech and it's not all movies. It's just about everything you could possibly think of is being crowdfunded. Uh, it's so true. Yeah. Who are some of the common donors? I mean, it's obvious that people are going to ask their mom and dad and their uncle and their cousin. Is that where it starts with most campaigns and mushrooms out from there? Or are you seeing a different pattern? I, it really starts with the inner circle that everyone brings. And uh, we've been to a lot of, you know, crowdfunding boot camps, things like that. Where we network with a lot of other you know, crowdfunding companies, and pretty much across the board, it starts with uh, the donors, the family and friend donors, and it goes from there, and it's really important that, you know, a lot of people who are interested in crowdfunding may sit back and think that, uh, you know, I, I don't really know enough people, or I don't have the right contacts, and you really have to look outside of your initial circle in the sense that uh, you need to think about are, are you going to uh, book clubs? Are you playing golf with people? I mean, you need to, you know, are you at baseball games where you've got a whole group of people, everyone sitting there? You need to look at different ways that you can find people and let them know. And the thing about crowdfunding is you have to bring it to the crowd. And once you find people that are interested and supportive, you need to have them tell people. So it is a, uh, it it's kind of starts close by, but it expands further. We do have people that are just uh, on the website. We do a tremendous amount of marketing, social media, and they go on the website and they're looking for one particular project and then they see another project that they think is interesting. Mm -hmm. So that, that does happen as well. You know, what's interesting is the offline, online comparison because a lot of people, when they think crowdfunding, they just think, okay, I've got to be active on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and whatever it might be, right? But you just mentioned a few things that are very much, you know, personal, connective things between people. Maybe people should be thinking more about doing events or maybe they should be turning to the person next to them and saying, hey, what about this? Is that where you're going with that? I really think so. Uh you know, first of all, not everyone is online with social media. It, if you are, great. It's a great avenue. But there's the old-fashioned way. And the old-fashioned way is all about meeting people, talking to them. Um, you know, that's how sales started. And when you're, when you're doing a crowdfunding campaign, you're really selling yourself. And so it's really important that... Uh, you get the word out whatever way is possible and knocking on doors and I, I don't mean, you know, complete strangers, but, you know, talking to avenues that you have and how you spend your day and coworkers, it's all a way to reach people and they know lots of people also. So. Yeah, that's the, the key thing is this sort of multiplier effect that if you tell someone and they tell someone and they tell someone. Exactly. Things, but what's tricky about it and what's interesting about it is you have to find a way to tell someone that makes them want to tell somebody else. You're right. Uh, and that's the key to this. That's, and that's such an interesting kind of art and science. You know, if you make a crowdfunding video and it's sincere and perfect and wonderful, but nobody watches it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I think so much gets into the pitch and so much gets into the way you frame things. So I wanted to ask you, in that vein, in that line of thought, if there's one bit of advice that you could give people one thing to think about that kind of goes above all others. I know that's tough because it's just one thing, but what would it be if I were just launching a campaign? What would I really need to know? I think the most important thing is planning ahead. And, and uh, you really need, just like any other business, really, um, you wouldn't open a McDonald's next to another McDonald's. You know, it's that kind of thing where you, you need to do your research. If you have a new business and you have a new product, you need to go out and see where your competition is. If it's a new film, is there a similar film like that? Uh, if it's a 
you know, a nonprofit, who is their market? And all of these things, I think, really add into what your plan is with crowdfunding. Because when you, you know, ideally, a few weeks to a month is really, in my opinion, the minimum to get started mm. with crowdfunding ahead of time. But what you want to do is you want to say, I have a new project starting on, let's say, March 1st. And can I have your support? Will you be one of the first people that will donate for it? And so then you start, you're building your momentum. And uh, another thing I would say along with that is you want to keep your supporters updated. You want to let them know what's going on. You want to keep them involved. I mean, you just really can't market enough. Mm -hmm. Those are two really great nuggets of advice. I want to cycle back to them. One is keep people updated. People love updates. People love it. It's it's so important. And the idea of first in, you know, just with any venture, when you go to that crowdfunding page and nobody's donated yet, nobody's contributed yet, it's kind of sad. So it's a really, (laughs) it's a super smart thing to do that you're mentioning is to go, before you launch, go to a few people and say, Will you be one of the first people in, dad or mom or, you know, whoever it might be, teacher, friend? Because when that launches, you want to see rapid adoption. You know, you want to see it... to yeah. hit your first you want to get the excitement right? and ball rolling, absolutely. Yeah, you want to see 10, 20% of your uh, funding goals met pretty fast. Definitely. You don't want Definitely. it to sit in there. So that's uh, really good advice. Well, Ellen Sperling, thanks so much for joining us today on this little broadcast. I appreciate you having me.